Spectra Energy is facing an activist. The $22 billion U.S. pipeline operator finds itself the target of Tom Sandell, founder, chairman, and CEO of Sandell Asset Management. He says the company can boost its stock price by cutting costs and pursuing a number of different strategic alternatives. Tom Sandell is with us now from London for a Bloomberg exclusive. Tom, good morning to you, and thank you for taking some time to talk to us here on Market Makers. Spectra Energy appears to be responding to your overtures. You have urged the company to do a number of different things, and on Friday, uh, Spectra Energy announced that it will, in fact, be moving some of its pipeline assets, its transmission assets, to a master limited partnership, a much more tax efficient structure, and the stock responded accordingly. Why, why is that not enough? Thanks, Eric. Um, as you know, we've been an investor in Spectra Energy for quite some time, and we were one of their largest shareholders together with a strategic, with a partner of ours. Um, now, why is this not enough? Well, we feel that this is a great first step, and uh, the, the, the board and the management have uh, adopted a third of our plan. Uh, we're very pleased to see that they are engaged with shareholders. This is, frankly, nothing new to them. They know uh, what can be done in this kind of company, and uh, it's something they have looked at over a long period of time, but uh, it's been, you know, for us a little bit slower paced than we would have hoped to. So we started to engage with them uh, roughly a month ago, having communications with the management, and uh, we're pleased to see a first step in the right direction. We feel that this stock um, has much, much more to go, a lot more runway. We feel that uh, if uh, the management and the board were to listen to our shareholders that it will be a $48 stock. Um, our urge is for them to uh, evaluate strategic alternatives for uh, West Coast Energy, their Canadian business, Canadian transmission systems, and uh, DCP midstream. Um, in our presentation, you'll see that we get uh, roughly five to six dollars um, yeah. in value if they were to IPO or sell these businesses, enabling Spectra to become a pure play GP, as many of their peers have done. And that's critical, and that sort of lays out your plan to get this stock up about 40 percent higher where it is right now. Do you have faith in the current leadership? and management that they will be able to execute it or would you like to see some change? Uh, I, I feel that uh these are great assets, it's tremendous assets, great business. Uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to see a step in the right direction. I think there's a lot more to do. If you look at their peers, Williams, uh, Energy Transfer, El Paso, uh, they've done a lot more. They did uh, convert into pure play general partnerships. And if you go back and look at Spectra's performance since 2006, their stock has been completely flat until they announced the recent drop down a week ago when the stock was up 13% on the back of that announcement. So since 06, Spectra's stock has gone nowhere. It has underperformed the peers by 70% up until a week ago. Tom, I just wanted to ask you, ask you specifically about the, the two other things that you've put on the table. I've spent a little bit of time looking at Spectra and wouldn't, you know, pretend to be nearly as familiar with it as you are, but there are some people who say that the pipeline assets probably aren't, uh, the Canadian pipeline assets probably aren't trading at a massive discount, and maybe there are more questions around this, this business called DCP Midstream. Is it not problematic, the proposal to take DCP Midstream public because of the fact that Philip 66 owns the other half of the business. I mean, there seem to be some other alternatives that they could pursue, like dropping that asset down to a master limited partnership the way that uh, Spectre is doing with the transmission assets. I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't one way or another, would it not free up the kind of capital that, that you're looking for, or at least realize the valuation to, uh, to drive the stock price higher? Well. As you know, DCP is, uh, has a big stake in, in DPM, which is a public MLP already. Now, what we're looking for is to grow the MLPs, and that's what Spectra hasn't done, which is what their peers have done. So that goes for SCP as well. There has been not much growth, and the management has really been running it almost like a utility, looking for long-term cash generation versus shareholder values. The, what's interesting, as, as I said, 
uh, Spectra has underperformed the peers over the past six years right. by seventy percent, and I think that's unacceptable. I no, think, no, no. We, you know, I'm not West Coast, for example, the IP West Coast. You get six dollars more. Um, we we drop DCP uh, in into uh, the, the what, MLP, Tom? and you, you, yeah. Why not sell? The 50% of yeah, DCP to Philips 66. Yeah, sell is a great idea. They should really either sell, as we said, evaluate strategic alternatives, either MLP drop downs or sale. That is what Williams did. They sold their uh, their EMP business. So, but that would I mean either way, this is going to require the participation of Philips 66. Do you have any idea what Philips 66 wants to do about this? Uh, we haven't uh, talked to Philips. We haven't uh, gotten a call back from them yet. I don't see why they would be adverse towards shareholder value creation. A Smith Food Foods, Smithfield Foods shareholder, Tom. So, would you be in favor of a breakup of this company instead of the takeover at $34 a share as Starboard is proposing? Well, you know, if they can get me fifty-five dollars, I'll take it. We bought it at twenty-six dollars earlier in the year, so it's been a good investment for us. But do you buy this idea that breaking up some of the business might lead to that higher value, that $55 a share? Yeah, I, I still haven't seen their uh, white paper, so I, you know, I'd like to get some more detail on their proposal. Uh, I know that Continental Grains had a $40 breakup, and that was after three years of operational improvements. So uh, you know, I'm very, very you know, eager to see the, uh, the white paper from Starboard uh, to have some more color on that. Uh, one thing is that I'm a little bit you know, concerned about the annual meeting, which is coming up now here, uh, I believe in August, and that they might have missed the nomination deadline to uh, remove some of the directors of the board. Uh, Tom, question for you about this, this uh, proposal. Well, it's not so much about the proposal from Starboard as it is the terms of the transaction that uh, Smithfield agreed to with Shuang Wei. As I understand it, uh, Smithfield is contractually prohibited from seeking superior offers. And if it is possible for the company to generate a greater return for shareholders by breaking it up and selling those businesses individually, as uh, Starboard proposes, uh, you know, is that not potentially a legal problem for a shareholder like you? Would, I mean, why would a company constrain itself from being able to, being able to get a bid higher than 34 yeah. bucks? What, what, well, is the, what is the board know, thinking there? You have a go-shop period that expires on June 27th, and after that, the breakup fee is going to go from 1.6% to 3.7%. So yes, that might make it a little bit more onerous for other parties to get in here. However, there were three parties talking to Smithfield. You had CP Foods from Thailand or JBS from Brazil, and they are not interested anymore. JBS bought somebody else, and CP, CP Foods from Thailand walked. So a little bit of a concern that they might just be one one buyer. Might be one buyer. You mean Shuang Wei may be the only buyer yeah, out there Shuang for Smithfield Yeah, Shuang Wei might be assets. the only one, but, but I don't know. I mean, there's smart guys over at Starboard, so I'm really, mm -hmm. really, you know, eager to see their presentation and their, their, you know, what their story is right now. Well, as you point out, they've done their homework on Smithfield. You've done your homework on Spectre Energy. Let's go back to that for a moment. Uh, I'd like to ask, and we were talking about it just a couple of minutes ago before the commercial break, uh, you've made this proposal to the company that it needs to pursue these three different strategic alternatives. Spectra has pr pursued one thus far. What happens if the company remains resistant? And I'm assuming that the company is resistant. What response uh, has Spectra and CEO Greg Ebel given you thus far? We've had very, very cordial conversations with them, and, and as you know, we, we, we prefer to have a constructive dialogue with the management when we have a, a, a meaningful investment in these type of situations. So we've had very friendly and cordial conversations, and as I said, I'm, I'm very happy to see that they've adopted a third of the, the plan that we'd like them to follow through on. And again, it's not something new, anything new to them or the board. These are uh, obviously alternatives that they have evaluated over time. and. Uh, I think there's a lot more to do here, and, and we'd be you know, obviously eager to, to continue working with them. Well, clearly every activist would like the situation to remain friendly, but you have gone public with your plan this morning, which is slightly less friendly than having private conversations behind closed doors. What happens next? What if, what if the company remains resistant to your proposals? Would you ever pursue a proxy battle to, to, to finally realize the value that you believe uh, is inside the company? Well, you see, if need be, we will 
we will take any action to realize shareholder values. And that includes a proxy battle to replace members of the board and ultimately, if necessary, go after management? Well, we did participate in the proxy fight for Heinz in 2006. It's, it's something that we've done, something that we'd prefer not to have to do. I would say it's rare that we get involved in the proxy fight. So I, I, I just uh, think that this is a great opportunity for everybody. Everybody can be a winner here. And uh, if we work together towards you know, various goals of various constituencies. Well, Tom, we thank you for sharing with us your views and perspective on Spectre Energy in Smithfield this morning. Tom Sandell is chairman, founder, and CEO of Sandell Asset Management.